Well, good evening, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on June 24th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at world weather. And we're looking at the last 48 hours on our sun, only up until midnight of the 21st. That's right, SDO is not producing any images since the beginning of the 22nd. Still watching some pretty active regions there in the imagery that we do have. Now looking at the last 48 hours incoming on the left-hand side, you can see pretty bright region incoming, and that looks like it could be a pretty sizable sunspot cresting around. And also, it may have just released quite a CME from a possible solar flare or plasma filament eruption. Looking at outgoing here, most of the activity is in the outgoing position, facing towards our planetary alignment of Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. Having a look here at 171 angstroms, this is all they're showing us here for the 21st, 24 hours of imagery, up until the 22nd. And you can see on the left-hand side, there is quite a big, bright region incoming. And pretty active at that. Having a look at the sunspot regions there, you can see that blue and red. And then also... To the right there, just south of it, a small delta spot. And then here, incoming... This could be a sizable sunspot region. We'll have to wait and see what SDO produces for us once they're back online. Solar X-ray flux remains in C range as it released a C-class flare on the 23rd yesterday and a couple minor C flares since then. And then here, on even on Lasco 2, they're only showing six hours of imagery. Real-time solar in, we're sitting at 430 kilometers per second and it has been well above that for both the past four days, five days. Long duration solar flares are the main effect from that. Look at the temperature as well. Jumping right up. ISWA space prediction spiral showing a sizable CME taking off towards stereo A. Looks like it'll give, it'll give Earth a glancing blow. Schumann resonance for today, a power of 54 highly energetic Schumann resonance here power of 35 amplitude of 54 quality 7.2 now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours as it's been pretty busy we're sitting at about 300 earthquakes across the USGS map and then we've seen some sizable activity here across the Nazca plate all around it 5.8 here, East Pacific rise, as well as 5.6 here, southeast of Easter Island. Pretty rare area for an earthquake. And as well here, Pacific Antarctic Ridge, 5.7. So three pretty sizable earthquakes, South Pacific. 5.1 here reported, Northern Peru. All this activity today, guys, 4.7 in Ecuador, as well as 4.4 here in Colombia. 4.0 Nicaragua, 59 kilometer depth. Quiet through the Caribbean. Seems most of the activity is going to the South Pacific. 4.8 here, Mid Atlantic Ridge. As well a 4.4 earthquake here reported in Kabar, Democratic Republic of the Congo. And as well a 4.9 here, Carlsberg Ridge off the coast of Somalia. 4.1 here in Iran. Earthquakes continue through that region. As well, 4.3 here in Moransan, Pakistan. 3.2 earthquake here reported in Bosnia. 7 kilometer depth. Only major earthquake through the region. And as well, 4.5 here, Iceland. And that was reported yesterday. Carrying on here to the West Pacific. As Japan, off the coast of Taiwan, has been very active today. Yonakuni, Japan, 5.1. Got to wonder what's going on there. Dong Gang, 4.1 most recent. As well, a 5.1 earthquake here in Sangay, Indonesia. 
and as well a 4.4. 4.8 here in Solomon Islands, 4.7 as well, Kira Kira. And then no deep earthquakes, Fiji, very quiet through the Kermadex. Looking over Hawaii, largest through the region was a 2.8. But what I wanted to show you here was a pretty active caldera in Kilauea. As it has started to fill up even further. This lava dome has grown about 60 meters in the past year, it's waiting for a sizable eruption. 4.4 earthquake here, Russia, 375 kilometer depth. That's the deepest earthquake the past 24 hours. Getting over to the United States here, nothing major to report except largest here, 3.3 Parkfield, California. And there's also a small swarm south of the Salton Sea, and that is occurring just now in the past hour. It's not even on this map. But I wanted to show you all of these active earthquakes all across the California Basin. Minor earthquakes continue. Parkfield there. And straight up the San Andreas Fault. Pinnacles. So heads up. San Francisco Bay Area. And as well, notable earthquakes here around and south of Yellowstone, minor at that. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Give you a quick look at the last seven days of, as we've seen some pretty decent activity here the past three days across the planet. All of the red being the most recent. Give a big shout out to all of the members right now. I wanna thank you all so much. I appreciate your support to the channel. It goes to help further research and development here with daily events worldwide. As well, I want to give a big thanks to all of the people who support the channel with super chats and donations. Much love, and it is greatly appreciated. Heads up, U.S. up into Cascadia. That is my thoughts today. Stay aware and prepared and have a plan. Now let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery. And as well, the most recent volcanoes getting updated. A couple tornado warnings through North Dakota and Wisconsin right now. But we're looking at Santa Maria in Guatemala. Fuego, Guatemala, Sabincaya in Peru. Nevada's de Ruiz, Colombia. Senge in Ecuador, Ibu, Indonesia. And of course, Chikarachki, Russia, Dakono, Indonesia. Reventador in Ecuador. Ebeko in Russia, another notable earthquake, Kamchatka, or sorry, a volcano, Semeru, Indonesia. So that's about 10 volcanoes getting updated today and two that have awakened, Ebeko and the other one. <laughs> Just can't think of the name right now. We have one tropical storm to talk about off the coast of Acapulco right now. Celia is alive and heading westwards into the East Pacific. As well, looking at some pretty extreme weather heading across the Canadian border. Extreme heat, northwestern Ontario. Tornado warnings, Bismarck, North Dakota. Having a look at the satellite imagery here. These are the storms that are going through, coming out of the states and heading up into the corner of, southeast corner of Winnipeg and then rolling into northern Ontario so heads up a lot of heat ahead of these and a cold front is going to be sweeping through coming from Alberta thank you very much as it was snowing early this morning in higher elevations the foothills of Alberta quick look around the rest of the world at satellite imagery pretty large lows in the Pacific right now as well the monsoon rains continue across India and Southeast China. Stormy conditions and flooding alerts are also going out through Melbourne and Southeastern parts of Queensland, New South Wales, floods in Australia and stormy conditions there, Victoria. 
and more to come. We also have quite a tropical system that we'll be developing for the Gulf of Mexico in the long range. Stay tuned for that forecast because that forecast, it's coming up quick. Extreme heat in also parts of Europe right now, Poland, Germany. Now let's get to weather here. Here is the system that is going to be affecting the border with the United States and Canada and up into Ontario as that low scoots northward into the Hudson Bay. And then watch that cold front to sweep through by Sunday, bringing some possible thunderstorms through Ontario, but heavier through the United States along that cold front. Watch for stormy conditions all the way up to Quebec. Look at that. Wow, that is quite a cold front as well. We've got another system here. That one came from the North Pole into Alberta and then scooting back into the Hudson Bay. Very strange jet stream right now, everybody. Heads up. Long range forecast here showing by next Wednesday, a tropical system heading into the coastlines of Texas and Alabama. That's right, Thursday looks like it'll be making landfall as a tropical system. We'll have to see how strong of a system it will be in the next few days. Forecast models get updated. As well, a little system there off the coast of the Carolinas. And as well, we have a beast of a storm here forming in the Caribbean. And that's going to be heading straight towards Mexico. In the long range, by July third, looks like it'll make landfall into the twenty. Uh, sorry, into the fourth of July, and then watch this thing just roar and blow up over the Gulf of Mexico. I really hope that this storm stays southward, but nonetheless, this is going to be affecting millions of people once it starts making landfall. So heads up, quite a big system here developing in the long range forecast. Overlooking South America, no major changes here. Daily evaporation rains in the north, pretty dry through Brazil, Argentina. Scattered showers moving in Tuesday, Wednesday for parts of Chile. Africa, daily evaporation rains, nothing major to report. Same with Europe, low pressure center over Turkey and waves of moisture coming in from the United Kingdom. Overlooking Southeast Asia, Indonesia, as I said, monsoon rains continue. Could be really heavy at times next week, Monday into Tuesday, especially through parts of India. And then Australia, you've got quite a system affecting you east coast and then west coast in the long range. So heads up my Aussie friends, big systems heading into your coastline much love everybody and i want to thank you for watching tonight stay aware and prepared stay young and have fun and get your daily due bye bye now If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.